What would happen if an airplane got hit by lightning? Why do airplanes sometimes randomly explode mid-air or even just while sitting on the tarmac? And what is the Achilles heel of the F-35 military fighter jet? It is all connected and boy, it's not what you think. On December 8, 1963, Pan Am Flight 214 was en route to Philadelphia as it encountered a line of thunderstorms. At 8.42 p.m., the crew decided to wait out the storm, which was expected to last 30 minutes, and entered a holding pattern at 5,000 feet with five other aircraft. 15 minutes later, the aircraft got hit by lightning that ignited the fuel vapor inside the left wing causing an explosive disintegration of the outer wing that led to the loss of control and a subsequent crash. Sadly, all 81 people on board lost their lives. Shortly after that incident, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, launched one of the most intensive research efforts in its history to determine the impact of lightning on aircraft and potential ways to defeat this hazard. Now, you may find it hard to believe but airplanes get hit by lightning all the time. In fact, each airplane gets struck by lightning once or twice a year, every 1,000 hours or so. The airplane that you most recently flew most likely was struck multiple times during its lifetime. But today, that's not really a big deal, as modern aircraft are fortified against lightning strikes. In fact, other hazards of thunderstorms are much more dangerous to modern aircraft than lightning, but more on that later. More often than not, lightning hits the wingtip, tail or nose of the aircraft. As an electric charge travels along the body of the airplane, the fuselage acts as a Faraday cage. And that's a special mechanism that English physicist and inventor Michael Faraday created way back in 1836 to protect devices from electromagnetic radiation. When flying in stormy conditions, pilots frequently see St. Elmo's fire. While technically not a lightning, it certainly does look like one. Additionally, the tails and wingtips are designed to distribute the charge from a lightning strike. Since a good chunk of modern aircraft are built from composite material that do not conduct electricity, conductive fibers are installed to disperse the current. To protect the avionics, special shielding, surge suppression and grounding is used. Moreover, modern aircraft have radars built in so they can detect storms and lightning far ahead and avoid it altogether. Heck, I can track lightning up to 40 kilometers away myself with my weather station. Lastly, the greatest amount of attention in terms of lightning protection is focused on fuel systems. The thickness of the aluminum surface on the airplane's wings was increased in order to prevent the lightning from potentially melting through the wing and reaching the fuel. The fuel tanks inside the wings, the valves and vents all must adhere to specific standards that were developed after that fatal Pan Am explosion. Now you would think that all the lessons that could have been learned from the Pan Am crash were learned, but the investigation panel never really identified the exact mechanism through which lightning had ignited the fuel. It was however recognized that fuel vapor was at least partially to blame. For this reason, new types of fuels were developed with less hazardous vapors that later became the norm. But this was not enough. For an airplane's fuel tank to explode, there needs to be an ignition source, fuel and oxygen. After the Pan Am explosion, the main focus of the FAA was to keep ignition sources out of the fuel tanks. But then came the accident that shifted the FAA's focus. In 1996, Transworld Airlines Flight 800 took off from Kennedy International Airport in New York and exploded mid-air 12 minutes after takeoff. The immediate suspicion was a terrorist attack, but it was later ruled out. The explosion was later traced to a center wing tank that is usually used for long-range flights. But this time, it was sitting nearly empty. A small amount of fuel in the tank can be more dangerous than a large amount of fuel, 
That's because it would take less heat to evaporate the remaining fuel and the resulting vapor is extremely flammable. Fuel vapor can form in the ullage, which is the unfilled space in the tank above the fuel. Once fuel vapor and air mixture forms in the ullage, all it takes is an ignition source to have an explosion. After a four-year investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, it was concluded that the likely source of ignition was a short circuit inside the wiring associated with the fuel quantity measuring system. This short circuit had ignited the flammable fuel vapor inside the center wing tank. The old school thinking was that the combustible fuel-air mixture will always exist in the aircraft fuel tanks, and thus Boeing engineers were focusing all their attention on eliminating all possible ignition sources. But this was easier said than done. In 2001, a Boeing 737 exploded on a very hot day in Bangkok while just sitting on the tarmac. Luckily, the airplane had not boarded any passengers just yet, but unfortunately, a flight attendant died. Coincidentally, the passenger manifest included the Thai Prime Minister and many other government officials. This explosion occurred yet again in the center ring tank, which was almost empty of fuel, but full of dangerous fuel-air mixture. The ignition source was not determined with certainty, or was believed to have originated from a fuel pump. Back in 1990, there was another similar accident that occurred with Philippine Airlines Boeing 737 on a very hot day. The aircraft was just leaving as a powerful explosion occurred in the center fuel tank which had been empty for the prior two months. The wing tanks cracked as a result of the explosion and the aircraft burst into flames. Miraculously, 112 out of the 120 occupants made it out alive. The cause of the incident was believed to have been damaged wiring that ignited fuel vapors. So by now it should be apparent that trying to eliminate the ignition source wasn't really working. After the Transworld Airlines incident, the National Transportation Safety Board declared the elimination of explosive mixture in fuel tanks as the number one priority. But what is the solution? And is there even one? In fact, there is a solution, and it's been used on military aircraft since World War II. When it comes to combat aircraft, you don't worry much about eliminating the ignition source. I think when I say bullets, it's pretty self-explanatory. As we discussed earlier, for an explosion to occur inside a fuel tank, you need an ignition source, fuel, and oxygen. The solution that the military had been using for decades is getting rid of the oxygen inside the fuel tanks by using an inerting system which would replace the air inside the fuel tank with nitrogen. So even if the aircraft fuel tanks get hit, they would not explode and even not leak due to a self-sealing technology. But this apparently doesn't work too well on the F-35s, even though it worked on World War II airplanes. More on that shortly. Here at Not What You Think, aside from Navy ships and aircraft, we're also passionate about wind sports. For the past few years, we've been using the forecast from the Tempest weather system. It's a wireless, solar-powered weather station that can forecast and report on lightning, wind speed, rain, air temperature, humidity, and much more, specifically for our area. So if you're a weather geek or do activities that are based on the weather, you'd really appreciate this. It really is a lot more accurate than those other weather stations that forecast for a large geographical area. If you're interested, click the link in the description and use the discount code NWYT to get 10% off. In the early 1960s, when commercial aviation exploded, no pun intended, it was proposed that nitrogen be utilized inside the jet's fuel tanks just in case, you know, to prevent fuel tanks from exploding. 
the FAA refused to even consider it as airlines lobbied and complained that the inerting system will cost them more money. And yes, earlier systems were heavy and expensive, but they could have been easily improved upon. Despite numerous fuel tanks exploding, the FAA did not invest much research into making inert fuel tanks viable and instead focused on ignition prevention. Had the Pan Am Flight 2014 had an inerting system installed on it when it got hit by lightning, chances are it would not have exploded. Finally, in 2008, 11 years after the NTSB put combustible fuel air mixture as the number one safety hazard, the FAA's fuel tank flammability reduction rule passed. This rule mandated that certain new aircraft must have either fuel tank inerting system or flammability reduction systems installed and that other airplanes also must be retrofitted by 2018. It is very likely that not all airlines outside of the United States have completed this. The FAA estimates that 8 out of 9 accidents that would have happened in the next 50 years will be prevented because of these inerting systems. Currently, the following two standards are in place. The inerting system must reduce oxygen content to 12% for commercial jets and to 9% for military aircraft. That's compared to normal atmospheric conditions where the oxygen content is 21%. Lockheed Martin's F-35 Lightning II is an American family of single-seat, single-engine, all-weather, stealth, multi-role combat aircraft that is intended to perform both air superiority and strike missions. However, despite being promoted as an all-weather fighter, the F-35 Lightning II has an Achilles heel, and that is actually Lightning itself. For an airplane named Lightning II, the F-35's Lightning protection systems have ironically become an embarrassing issue at times throughout its development. You must be racking your brain on what happens if the F-35 gets hit by a lightning bolt, right? Burnt exterior, jets on fire, fuselage shredded to pieces are maybe a few thoughts crossing your mind. If that is so, rest assured, the reality is far from what you're thinking. On July 13, 2021, Two F-35B Lightning II aircraft based out of Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan, were severely damaged after being struck by lightning mid-flight. Both were able to land safely and no one was injured, according to the Marine Corps. But both birds suffered enough damage to classify each incident as a Class A mishap. Class A mishaps are defined as incidents that result in either death or permanent disability or more than 2.5 million dollars in damages. But that is strange because F-35s and many other types of aircraft are equipped with an onboard inert gas generation system or OBIGGS OBIX. The OBIX diverts air from the aircraft engine and separates the nitrogen, injecting it into the jet's fuel tanks. This way the non-flammable nitrogen replaces the flammable oxygen in the tank, helping to reduce the possibility of fuel tank explosions. So if the OBIX is what prevents fuel tanks from explosion when struck by lightning, why were those two F-35s damaged so badly? See, that Japan incident isn't the first time. In the early 2010s, the F-35s were prohibited from flying within 25 miles of lightning after Pentagon's weapons tester discovered deficiencies with the original OBIGs with getting enough inert gas into the fuel tanks. That issue was resolved once the OBIGs was redesigned in 2014. However, in June of 2020, the government's F-35 Joint Program Office imposed flight restrictions on the F-35As used by the U.S. Air Force and most international customers. The decision came after the Air Force discovered an issue with the OBIGs. 
during an F-35 depot maintenance check at the Ogden Air Logistics Complex at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, an Ubix tube was found to be damaged, questioning the aircraft's ability to cope with lightning strikes. Past contracting documents have outlined how the stealthy composite material skin on all F-35 variants does not provide inherent passive lightning protection, unlike metal-clad aircraft. The potential risks posed by lightning strikes exist on the ground as well as in the air. A tweet dated July 27, 2021 by Nellis Air Force Base captioned, which lightning do you think strikes harder? Shows two F-35As notably seen parked next to mobile lightning rods for their protection. Better safe than sorry, right? But lightning is not the only concern when it comes to aircraft operation during thunderstorms. Freezing rain can pose a grave danger to aircraft because when those supercooled water droplets hit the airplane, they freeze instantly, making the aircraft heavier and disrupting airflow over the wings, which results in reduced lift. Hail can physically damage the engines, windshield and the edges of the wing. Updrafts and downdrafts can overspeed or stall the aircraft, which can be especially dangerous during takeoff and landing. But with help from weather radars on board, pilots can detect and avoid these weather situations. And it's for the reasons mentioned that landing and taking off during thunderstorms is avoided. <laughs>